I V M. Hey, welcome to Shunya One, episode forty-four. Today we're talking to Akash Gyani, one of the founders of Insta Mojo. Uh, Insta Mojo is actually a company which has been around since two thousand twelve, and they've been in the payment space, but they've come to become a full stack sort of platform for uh, small businesses in the country. I've actually known uh, Akash and Sampad for a while. And I think we had some really interesting conversations with Akash about how they grew and what they're on to and, you know, what kind of challenges they face. Yeah, the coming uh, years for them are going to be really interesting. I think that this is one of the more dynamic spaces and uh, one of the spaces with the most potential in terms of like, you know, companies that need to be created to service it, right? I mean, uh, at this point in time, you look at most SMEs and they're like tally and that's it, but they don't have other aspects of software that really kind of uh, make a lot of sense or that, that they're really uh, deploying effectively. Exactly. In fact, they were averse to it because everything was, I mean, obviously most people didn't want to document what they were doing in their business. But I think times are changing with uh, GST, with Aadhaar and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's interesting times ahead for Have small businesses. Have you registered your Aadhaar number yet with your mobile companies? I 31st March, people, 31st March. Is approaching. (laughs) But this is interesting. We get into this and a lot more and also about the dark side of payments. Yeah. Uh, So it should be a fun conversation. And uh, I should also say uh, congrats, Amit, for three years for IBM. Ah, yes. Thank you. It has been three years. It is kind of crazy. Yep. And we got some feedback on that. Yes, we did. Actually, we had, uh, so I put out a tweet saying three years of IBM and stuff like that. And it turns out that all of our guests who we've had previously all want your job, dude. Japan (laughs) Vyas, uh, Hardik Shah, Himanshu Khanna, all were like, so Japan put a message out saying that we should do a podcast with you guys reversing roles. And I'm like, how will you host? And then in response to that, everybody was like, I'll host, I'll host, I'll host. So I think Sheila... Everybody wants it. This is, uh, I don't know what, is that a good thing or a bad thing, but we'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So onward with the show then. All right. Today we have with us Akash Gyani from Insta Mojo. Welcome to the show, Akash. Thank you. Happy how's to it, be here. How's it going? Welcome back to Bombay after a long time. I think you've uh, you've been a Bombay person uh, most of your life, but happen to be in Bangalore now. Fled like to Bangalore, like all the because other Bangalore, where the tech scene is. Like all the other startups who make it big in life choose to leave their city behind. Yeah, you know those tech dreams, right? I think the only thing we figured is we want to be moving there before we become too big. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you were actually <laughs> <laughs> you were actually one of the. Early folks to leave, uh, not just Bombay, but yes, Malar and Goregao, where <laughs> which used to be and still is my haunt. So, welcome to the show, man. I mean, good to have you. Just want everyone to get a sense of what your story has been so far, building InstaMojo and obviously all the other stuff you've tried before that. And uh, if you could give us a background on how this journey has been. Uh, yeah, so I think InstaMojo started about mid of 2012. Um, and prior to that, so, you know, see, personally, I've always, so like, you know, the, the three years prior to InstaMojo, I'd been jumping from a corporate to a startup to corporate back to a startup and so on. Somehow a corporate job could never give me the satisfaction I wanted. And the startups I was getting into never worked out, but well, that's part of being in a startup. So, and that's the learning. That's where you learn from. Like, that's the more. learning. And yeah, this, it's always fun being there. It's just that after a point, it gets to you that, you know what, things are not working out. How long can you keep struggling? But I guess sometimes struggle is the is the fun part, and so twenty mid of twenty eleven is you know when uh, Sampad, myself, Harshad, and Aditya you know got together and you're working on this startup which was helping small businesses run promotions in a very targeted hyper local sense, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's something which you're doing for about almost a year before we ran out of money and before we figured it's just not going anywhere, you know we did a did our best, went to everyone, kept selling, kept building something, just didn't work out. And one day decided to say, you know what, okay, we made a wise choice that it's not going to work out, let's let's shut this down. And post that, we were talking to ourselves, you know, we had a good time doing it, at least attempting, we have a decent team over here. Mm-hmm. And for most startups, getting a right team is, it right, is the biggest right, challenge, right? Thing, yeah. A lot of, do, lot of ideas don't get off the ground because there's no team in place. And we thought we have something over here, there's something else we can do. And that's when InstaMojo happened. 
So our fascination was always about helping small businesses, you know, come online, grow their business online. And we believe India is a land of SMEs or micro and, you know, really, really small SMEs, right? So there's a lot we can do for that. So yeah, that's, that's how Instagram just started. The first thing we realized is if you're an individual selling something yourself or, you know, if you're a small business, you cannot collect payments online. That's like a very, very big challenge. To be able to do that, you have to approach a bank to get a payment gateway. The bank will look at all of your documents, all of your history forever, mm -hmm. balance sheets and whatnot. And then come back to you a month later saying that you're missing the following six documents. Yes. And a few more cycles of that and they, they might approve you. <laughs> Maybe, yes. And the worst part is the moment they approve you, They'll throw a random API at you and say, you know what, go integrate. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'd be lucky to be thrown an API from a bank. <laughs> but that almost never happens. Yeah, so, and again, you know, so that again puts you in a cycle. Do you, do you have a technical team in place? Do you want to outsource? How much can you spend on it? Right. And one basic thing is, a precondition is to be able to do any of this, you need to have a website in the first place. Mm -hmm. right. And most small businesses don't have a website. So how do they do it? And we figured... Or we thought, you know, why can't we just let anyone share a link? You could SMS your customer a link, you could email them, and they should be able to make a payment to you. Right. Uh, that's what the basic seed of, you know, what we thought. Right. And we thought, okay, let's give it a shot. Seems like a promising space, seems like a big enough idea. We pitched this to Rajan, who was uh, the MD of Google, uh, you know, who was in touch with us earlier, but some of you were never convinced with what we were doing before this. Uh, but when he heard this, he said, oh, you know what, this makes sense. Right. Go for it. And he wrote us a small check, and we are like, okay. Finally, we're in business. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's how it started around mid-2012. And, yeah, I think things kept getting bigger over time. So. Yeah, I, I remember you guys actually started by saying, uh, use this social sharing service to just give away stuff. Uh, I think it was more like a trying attempt at building a viral loop of sorts by saying, you know, I can just give away stuff, create short links, share it on Twitter or anywhere else. Uh, and then you moved into purchases and payments for only digital uh, digital goods. Was there an angle uh, to just trying digital first and then moving into actual physical goods? I mean, yes. So uh, we wanted to be, you know, in that basically we powering those transactions from day one. When we started out, right? So when we pitched this idea to, you know, banks or others, they said, you know what? Oh, this is too risky. We can't power you. And of course, you know, to be able to do payments, you need someone to be backing right, you up. Right, right, right. And we felt, okay, we can't keep waiting for them, right? Let's just start some activity, right? And all of us had a good amount of social presence. So we leveraged that part. And we said, you know what, why not just let you give away your, you know, used or unused products for free? Right. Which could be your books, which could be clothes, it could be anything. Right. We started with that due to our own social, you know, following and presence, we were able to get a decent amount of traction with that. During that part, you know, we basically used that to buy time to be able to get some banks and other partners on board. Which nice. is when we actually had a payment gateway powering us. and So the first thing we started was digital goods. So the logic behind that was, you know, we felt, right, that digital is the space. Mm. There, there's this entire movement about independent authors, you know, authors trying to self-publish, not right. really, you know, relying with, you know, going with, you know, the bigger publishers. There are a lot of these indie bands who want to sell to the audience directly instead of having a label come in between, you know, take away most of the money, right? So we saw there's a good enough presence or market over there. And we went after that. It worked out to an extent, but over time we realized that uh, digital is it's a great space to be in, but it's never going to be able to make you the you know the company that you want to be. It's not physical goods. Physical goods were basically going to be a much bigger chunk. Always. Yeah. And somehow, you know, that entire part about people, so this was about you know, five to six years back. People are still writing, the authors are still writing their own books, publishing it themselves. Is it a big enough space today? Are they making a lot of money with it? So, some are, some aren't. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I do Most remember times. you had like uh, international customers buying ebooks and whatnot. I remember uh, catching up with you guys at some point and say and realizing that people are selling thousands and thousands of dollars worth of uh, software. Also, people yes. are selling software online by their InstaMojo links. So even that was happening. Even that was happening. So we were basically targeting both the US and the Indian market, mm -hmm. right. which I think is one of the bigger mistakes we made over time. Mm -hmm. But so that, that's that's why we started, right? And got what is a decent traction, right? But so a lot of things also happened by serendipity. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we added after the option of selling digital goods is the option to be able to you know, run an event and uh, ah, you know let someone you know collect payments for an event they are running, right? And that happened just by serendipity because one of our earlier users who gave up a product came to us saying, "I'm running this event or this workshop, 
and can I use you to collect payments? And we thought, well, uh, why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Just don't upload a file. That's it, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So that happened. Then we said, you know what? If you take away the event part of it, you could just be selling a service, like a consultancy service of sorts. Mm. Yeah. So that part came in. Oh, that's interesting. So, like, you could get uh, if you're a freelancer, you could use it for your own direct billing. Yeah, yes. I a, I remember people were selling their time. That's fair. On, <laughs> on Instagram, <laughs> okay. no, because that's actually for freelancers. Generally, that's a really big pain point, right? How do you collect payments, right? If you can send a, hey, here's my payment link. Make your payment. It will tell you exactly how much to pay. It, it would. It's actually a very massive pain point for a pain point for a lot of freelancers and guys who are working on indep- as independent creators. Yeah. Yeah, and you could get that integrated with your calendar, with your some other invoicing systems, right. and you know that that'll just work for you. So, so yeah, over time things kept getting added on. Then you know we added physical goods to it, with the option that you could actually be able to ship your products, you know, using our help. So a lot of these things fell in place over time. And like I said, one of the earlier mistakes we made was made was targeting the US and the Indian market, mm-hmm. which we figured is something we can't do hmm. for Why a small team. That? Oh, us, just so, because of the difference in regulations. Not just regulation. Like there are two different markets. The problems you're solving are very different. Uh, so for US, payments is not really a problem, right? You have PayPal and a lot of other companies right. doing it. It's just the option that yeah, there's someone who could do it in a better manner. There's someone who could add you, you know, give you some more functionality to it. Hmm. But in India, the problems are very different. Right? It's like being a first world and a third world problem solving at the same time, right. and the same product cannot do it in two different right, markets. Right. Not to mention the fact that you need a lot of money to be able to compete in the US. run the same ship there. Yeah. So we decided to let go of the US thing for now. Hmm. There's a big enough opportunity over here itself. Let's let's focus on that. I remember, uh, of course, you started with uh, your vision, like as I would, uh, if I may say, right, is to obviously build for this SME, uh, larger Indian market of micro SMEs and so on, and not just solve for payments, which is just one aspect of uh, of what you essentially cater for them but also for a plethora of other uh, you know functions yes. in doing a business in fact so one thing you should just mention like invoicing mm-hmm. i mean even invoicing is a big yeah, pain especially for uh, freelancers or independent professionals or even for a small business who's trying to sell online yes it is and, i uh, have to I, I literally have to do that every friday Need to carve out the time so that I can make up the invoices that we have to. I mean, like it, it really is. A, it is a massive. Pain, you should man. use Insta Mojo. I could use Insta Mojo. I should use Insta Mojo. Yes, I, I don't want to be plugging over here. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely we must be plugging over here. Insta Mojo should sponsor this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so see, like I mentioned, right? So the aim was to always fascinated by small businesses and the lot of problems that we could be solving over there. Right. So payments is the first part and the most critical part of it because with payments you get a lot of insight into the businesses, you get their trust, you get a lot of data, you know, which helps in a lot of other ways. Right. It helps you being at the center of a transaction, right? That's a core of core of a business. And so the, the first thing we added over time was an online store, which is what a small business needs. Yes. Some of them can afford to have a team or you know pay off an agency or you know pay off a shop if I be able to get right. you know a good enough store. But for most of them, that's not an option. Right. And we said, why can't we give you a free online store? When yeah. you make transactions, we make some money out of it. Hmm. Otherwise, this is there. This is an online brand of yours, which you spend no money on maintaining. Yeah, right. So we had that. Today, we have like more than 10,000 stores on Instamojo. Oh, wow. Okay. That's which, a big number. Yeah. And there's this whole movement of sorts. Right? So the kind of products that we see is just incredible. Hmm. Stuff that, you know... You can't be searching for on Google or on Flipkart. Like, you just don't know these things exist. Okay. Mm-hmm. Someone from Kashmir selling, you know, rhubarb oil soap and water. Like, a lot of, lot of okay. very indigenous stuff that we see on sale. So, sometimes it's just fascinating to be able to look at these products that we have internally and figure out, you know, how can we leverage this? You know, how can we expose this to a whole new community out there? Right, yeah. That's be it actually, or beyond. So That's an interesting opportunity as well, right? I mean, like, to... Yeah. That's actually the story, right? The fact that you're putting every small, you know, in the I think in the West they say mom and pop shops, mm-hmm. right? Literally in India there are uh, street sellers, mm-hmm. there are small shops, there are kiranas, there are uh, handlooms and whatnot. Like if you go into more and more cities in the country, so all exposing all of those guys to the rest of the world as a market, yeah. I think. In fact, these are still businesses, right? What we're talking about are still businesses who have a partnership or some kind of incorporation. Mm-hmm. We're sitting right here in Bandra. You have no idea about the number of, you know, homemakers in Bandra itself who are selling things like 
Oh, yeah. Candles and cupcakes out of their homes. Yeah. Right. Oh yes, of course. And non-registered, right. not yeah. businesses. Just, just yeah. individuals, yeah. and you know they use all kinds of social media like Facebook and Instagram to be able to, you know, promote their products. Right. right. And behind them there is Insta Mojo who's helping them convert these sales to be able to close out the transaction to be able to help them ship these products over time. Amazing. So that's what do you think is your roadmap and where are you so far in this? Uh, you know, helping build out this ecosystem. Obviously. like you said right i mean you guys in 2012 were obviously one of the first i would say guys to even think along these lines uh and i th- maybe just the flip cards of the world were sort of starting out seeing their scale and now you have obviously amazon and all these large marketplace sort of giants right which are always uh, taking up uh mind share with people but again it's hard to discover things there and i think more branded mm-hmm. stuff is anyway the market there they're, they're trying to replace the uh, you know the, the malls the supermarket yeah yeah they're trying to replace the mall the nehru place and the lamington yeah. roads exactly so but we are, that's not what you're going after yeah. so wh- what do you think is the overall uh, challenge which you are trying to solve here like there are i mean based on whatever research report you go by mm-hmm. but even at a very conservative estimate there are at least a couple of million small and micro businesses out there who are being run in a very inefficient manner mm-hmm. the primary fact being they don't either have the know how or the the bandwidth to be able to leverage things like you know internet to be able to have their own website mm-hmm. be it for payments or for any other thing right a lot of these guys spend 30 or 40% of their time just trying to ship their products yeah. and that's because a bigger company will not entertain them and that small scale doesn't make sense for them right so which is why we come like you know we can help you do all of these things bring you all the technology that a flipkart can afford to have for itself can we bring this for the millions of smes out there right that's that's a bigger vision in helping these businesses come online grow their business online and yeah to do things in an efficient lazy manner so efficiency is i think the core thing that you're trying to kind of solve for right yes. you're trying to make it so that uh, these guys get the uh, the benefits of efficiency that larger companies with more uh resources resources are able to kind of do interesting yeah that and makes sense of course right i mean it's a it's a saas platform it's online you go mm-hmm. register yourself uh, sign up start up again but on the side of payments like payments and fintech as the word is <laughs> has been the centerpiece of conversation since uh, yeah 2012 and onwards right and every year there seems to be one more layer added on to the fintech story that oh now payments was hot then p2p payments was hot then oh, wallets, wallets were hot <laughs> then now <laughs> lending are lending dead. is there now lending is hot so <laughs> there's so much to do or says at least there's a lot to talk about in fintech i don't know exactly how much to do but you guys are out there solving for a real use case right you're growing uh, and you're seeing lot more and more people join your platform uh, what is the core i mean i would say uh, reason why someone joins you guys versus going to these larger aggregator kind of platforms i don't think they have an option uh and it's still the banks are still stupid and the and everyone is just no, not yeah. doing it as efficiently well, as you guys are there, there's stupid. also expense right i mean like some of the stuff has cost to set up which for a small business becomes unaffordable right if i'm not mistaken insta mojo is free to set up yeah. whereas the cheapest payment gateway that you're going to get otherwise is like 25 30 grand at least to set up even if you don't have the fee huh. uh just the cost of setting it up yeah in terms of paying salary to you know your you your yeah, team or too. an external yeah. developer right that itself is way more yeah. so i wouldn't say the banks or other companies are stupid right everyone has a priorities they know where their money is right there's a reason the entire msme space has been uncatered to mm-hmm. it's because the incentives for a bank or a bigger company lie elsewhere right Now, for a lot of these businesses, the kind of products or services they sell, platform like Flipkart or Amazon is the not the way for it. Like we, we said, right? Flipkart is powering the say trying to replace the Lamington Road of sorts. Hmm. Right. What you're doing is you're putting up commodities over there. You go to Flipkart to buy a phone or a laptop. Essentially, you're looking for a specific kind of a product. You're not really concerned who is selling it. Right. That's right. When we make an answer, say, I know I bought it on Flipkart. Do we ever say, oh, this was an ABC retailer behind it? Right. That's nope. absolutely no idea who. Nobody cares. What we have, right? All we say, oh, Flipkart assured, uh, Amazon fulfilled, uh, yes. Yeah. That's what makes sense. So, what we don't do is, you know, when we put these businesses out there, right? It's our own brand. That's what we are leveraging, right? right. It's you. It's not Insta Mojo doesn't come in and say, you know, we are giving you something. Hmm. All Insta Mojo brings in is that level of trust, which, which helps a buyer get convinced. And you know what? If something goes wrong. 
इंस्टा मोजो वुड यू नो हेल्प मी से गेट माई मनी बैक राइट सो वी एट दैट ट्रस्ट पार्ट टू इट बट एसेंशियली इट्स यू योर ब्रांड आउट दर विच इज सेलिंग समथिंग सो वी वॉन्ट टू गिव दिस बिजनेस इज अ प्लेटफॉर्म विद कैन expose themselves so their own customer base becomes kind of critical in terms of that as well right yes they need to basically sell to people who they're already selling to and basically use those people as ways to kind of push this forward too so yes of course you're selling it to people you know yeah. or you know whom you can reach out to right but also using other ways we are able to help them get more visibility okay so the way we optimize your own online store hmm. via seo and you know right. few ways it just gives you say two x the reach of what you usually have Mm-hmm. What we don't do is directly drive customers to you today. Correct. That's something which we could be addressing But over time. I think you have other tools as well, right, to help with the marketing and stuff like yes. that, right? So I can you talk about that a bit? Like, well, how would you help a small business who is trying to, who's basically trying to sell to their, they have their existing customer base, now they want to move beyond that a little bit, right? So, what kind of tools do you guys have that can help with that kind of stuff? So, one of the things, I mean, apart from SEO and you know being able to get organic reach for right. your for your you know products or services. One of the things that you're working on right now is being able for you to advertise on Facebook. Ah, okay. So when you put up your product on Insta Mojo, it comes with the link. It comes because a lot of these people again don't have nice. the know how to be able to go and advertise over there. Right, right, It's right. It's a complicated system, right? Oh, how do I bid? What is a bid? How much do I pay? What's a good number to? Right. What's a good budget to have for this? So that's something which you're going to be taking care of in a very productized manner, not by you know. Manually helping. Yeah, no, obviously. No, but I mean, an agency and so on. Okay, there are many people who will do this for you. That's right. That's not the point. So yeah, that's some of the things that you are working on. Uh, another thing that you are doing right now is, which again comes back to the fintech space, is lending, right? So, uh, doing all these partnerships with a bunch of players to be able to lend you money. Okay. Which essentially helps you, you know, for whatever for reason. For like credit right? cycles and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it or? could be for your working capital cycles. It okay. could be to be able to, you know, expand your capacity of sort. Okay. So, which. Yeah, which yeah. is again helps you growing a business. That's really right? interesting because I mean, like uh, that seems to be much more in the uh, bank space than the, you know, I mean, like you're actually giving uh, you're uh, you're Getting telling credit. somebody that this person is credit worthy because we've seen what their business is like, right? You're you're yeah. basically putting that out there. Th- th- there's so much of data that we have. There's so much right. of insights that we can bring out, and we're able to take calls saying, okay, this is a business that we've seen over the past two years. There's an X amount of you know sales that doing. This is how they've been growing. Right. If you're able to give this business a couple of lakh rupees, hmm. based on our prediction, it it can really grow it to a certain extent. Right, right, right. And there are a bunch of banks and other NBFCs who were dying to partner with us on this. That's really cool, man. I really like that. That's a really interesting way to use the things that you guys yeah. are doing. Yeah. In fact, oh. uh, we're going to take a quick break and come back and talk about the kind of things you see in the underbelly. of <laughs> payments <laughs> because that's where it gets murky ah murky yep. is good long long ago not in bethlehem but in a place nearby there was a wonderful birth of a huge show which i like to call cyrus says a show that encapsulates everything in human history from the first homo sapien to the last homo sapien Uh, who's traversed the entire world and then come back to India? This is a show which tells you everything about everything. If you want to know, avoid Google. Come to us. It's called Cyrus Says. Get new episodes every Monday on the IVM Podcast app or wherever you get your podcast on. You get one banana water free with every podcast. All right, I'll just check that. I'll just check that. Hey, welcome back. So I think we left off at a point where we were just getting to understand how. while everything is great when you're solving uh, for people who really need a service like this especially payments being able to help them with a the store help them with all the other you know infrastructure stuff which you provide when they're genuinely trying to run their business there is always and i guess this is why banks are overtly cautious there is always this entire side of scams and fraud oh, and massive <laughs> a whole underbelly of how what people are trying to just game the system right and i mm-hmm. think like everyone all these payment processors have entirely built their businesses or uh, they're always sort of running against uh, people trying to you know undercut them or yep. swindle them in some way so how did you all uh, you know what's your thoughts on that like from day one i know you guys have taken that really seriously mm-hmm. uh, how did that work out and how's it been so if you look at the traditional way of doing it uh, and which is why you know when we touched upon the point earlier that a bank will take a month long time to approve you to payment said so what they essentially do is be the bank or any traditional player is look at your history see if you know as an individual as a business you have a safe you know you have decent enough track record they do a physical checks in terms of you know are you able to actually fulfill whatever you're claiming to sell 
a lot of those things are you really making cupcakes or do they have yes. something else <laughs> <laughs> and they 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 do they do have surprise audits and stuff so yeah they have good processes to deal with it it's just that that's something which you can't take to the msme space right because it's good when you work with you know dozens or a few hundred or thousand of you know these merchants right. you can't use that to scale to a lakh and a million merchants right so on day one we figured or i think the wisest wisest thing we ever did is we need to have very very robust risk systems to to be able to scale this mm-hmm. as a business and the first company we looked at is paypal how they do it globally and i think they do a tremendous job of it in fact a lot of their risk team is based in chennai which you know manages okay. this but uh, so it took a lot of inspiration from there we spoke to a lot of people to understand you know what are the good ways to do it and there are there are two key parts to it right so when a merchant signs up on insta mojo today there's the initial part so you sign up today you upload a couple of documents right which is like a pan card and bank statement right. that's it and in a matter of 2 minutes our system approves you or rejects you right so that's one part right? which is like you can say at the entry point and there are a lot of things over time that we keep looking at which is about you as a business which is how does that again you know fall in line with you know the other businesses like yours hmm. so for example i know that you know there's this travel agent who's doing x business somewhere right now as a as a category travel agents have a particular pattern hmm. they have a seasonality they have certain ways of running the business right do you fall in line with that or not so a lot of these things which the system keeps checking for and there is the buyer side transaction part of it right so how do your customers come how do they pay are there any specific patterns that we observe in this so what time we discovered a lot of things in fact yeah like you mentioned the end of belly i think every week or so there is a new mo that we discover oh this okay. is a new way someone is trying to gain the system wow <laughs> <laughs> so see essentially you have you have merchants who try to you know take their customers for a ride right at the same time you have customers who try to you know take the merchants for a ride and you pay for wow. something oh. and you just go and claim oh i haven't got it i haven't got this oh, product okay. instead of a soap you sent me a break or you didn't send me anything a lot of those things right in india the buyer side fraud is fairly controlled okay. because of a focus on 2fa and otps and right right, yeah, right. so rbi has done a good job at that so huh. but the merchant side risk massive okay what we're seeing recently is a new kind of a collusion between the merchants and buyers <laughs> okay so yeah i mean so the buyer pays the merchant the merchant says the product is or whatever it has been delivered right. they get their money over time the buyer comes and says you know what oh this i haven't got it right i, I, I want my money back or oh i tell you a very interesting thing that we you know we've been seeing recently mm. uh what the buyers are doing is again i'm not sure if i should be saying this <laughs> i'm it, sure my it. team is going to kill me okay this is only nobody's example listening. i'll give nobody's <laughs> listening say it nothing nothing more than this uh <laughs> So, a few examples very recently. Ah, uh, when you know, say your buyer is paying, say fifty rupees to a particular merchant for anything, mm-hmm. what they're doing is they're taking their statements, photoshopping it, whatever, and making that fifty rupees look like fifty thousand. What? Okay. Yup. <laughs> and they come back, and so this is the way when they actually said to the merchant, say, you know what, your payment partner has defaulted me. They are charging me fifty thousand for something which you're selling for fifty rupees. And wow. that merchant again. Now our trust is is at stake. Over right. yeah, the merchant just you know comes to us and says, you know what, this is what we're doing. And we're like, oh boss, wait, chill. Uh, <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> oh wow. And then of course, so you know, there are ways we identify that. There are ways we deal with it. But yeah, so these are some very interesting things. Like every day there is a new mo, like I said, which keeps cropping up. Interesting. And it's all on the buyer side that this stuff is happening. The merchant side is sides? no. Well, actually, merchant is far more. Huh. Uh, so there are a lot of. internally like we have this matrix kind of a thing huh. where you have your business categories and you have the locations of these okay. businesses right in this matrix if you put a point somewhere the system will tell you what is the risk level of this particular okay. category for this so there right. are certain areas which have been blacklisted in the system okay because we see a lot of fraud originating from those right right so no. there are certain categories which are far more prone to i'm guessing to mobile phones Mobile phone is something that we don't really deal with. Ah, okay. Like I said, that's the Flipkart category. Right, 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 right. But yeah, so I don't think I can go deeper into that. Okay. But yeah, so uh, if you, what we can say is, any kind of a business or a location, and when I say location, it can be a bigger city, it can be a tier three, four city as well. Ah. You give us a name, and we'll be able to come back saying, you know what, what is, if you want to venture out there, what is the risk you should be prepared for? Wow, that's some that's, massive amounts of data you yeah, guys that's... collect. But that's where that's where it all the intelligence comes from, I guess, that's, right? That, Being able to run a platform like this. Yeah, yeah, that's what the juice is. Like we figure, right? So today at Insta Mojo, we have a risk team of five people. Wow. Which looks at over three lakh merchants, which looks at like a lot of thousand transactions on a daily basis. Right. So, yeah, I don't think we can, you know, 
you don't want to be having a team of 100 and over time 500 members just to be able to do this right, right? this right. has to be done with technology this has to be done with a lot of algorithms and ai and stuff so that's where a major emphasis is which has always been from day one so i think that's one of the wisest calls we ever taken mm-hmm. like we can go slow but let's get this bit right right because if this is not there then you are basically building a castle on a very flimsy yeah. foundation yeah and i like you said this is the reality of the market also so you have to deal with it if people are always out there trying to uh, game the system yeah. and do things like this <laughs> <laughs> always yeah, it's crazy man and it's not about india right i think mean, you go to any place right yeah. you go to india thailand usa wherever yeah people will always be trying that that's right. that's a part of the scatter mouse game is always there mm. amazing and no wonder now everyone's talking about blockchain <laughs> and and aadhar and all these other systems when you hear about these stories suddenly for a moment you think maybe maybe these guys are on to something yeah. but i'm not sure if you guys have gone there yet no no but yeah we need something a blockchain for trust or something there yeah oh my yeah. god is that's that your interesting idea actually is that the next thing you guys are building that's you can't next, tell us that's a unicorn <laughs> build <laughs> the moment you add blockchain to your deck is it's there. like <laughs> the billion dollar f- is out there but uh, but again just to add one more point aadhar as well right aadhar is a one thing which uh, is useful for identity right. in fact i just used it to get a mobile phone number oh really yeah 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 i actually went to i went to replace a I sim card of mine that, man. Shit, man. and there that. was the geo guy outside the airtel store and he said i can give you a sim right here on the spot he literally was outside the airtel store <laughs> <laughs> he's like selling it like bhaji but you know so yeah so aadhar verified sim in few minutes but are, are you concerned where your data will end up dude i don't know where my data is <laughs> I anywhere except it i mean like there there's no point in fighting at this point so so you obviously there are these systems so how how much do you work with uh, platforms like aadhar or gst for that matter and you know all these other constructs of uh, infrastructure so i mean aadhar specifically we haven't done anything but gst is definitely one of the things that you know we are working on right. so there are there are a few plans that you know in fact we'll see something out on gst from insta mojo maybe the next quarter or so awesome uh, but yeah, that's as a whole right conceptually i think it's a brilliant thing it just enables a lot of or basically manage a lot of these businesses to come online yeah. and you know digitize their business right so i'll give you an example when we started out back in 2012 or in the first year or so every business that i spoke with or eight of 10 businesses that i spoke with They say, "Oh, I'm happy with cash. I yeah. don't care about mm-hmm. it. I'm cash is good. Cash is great." Now they Today, want the input credit. I just don't hear that that thing. Like yeah. no one talks about cash. Yeah. Really? So, no one talks about cash. It's well, a maybe I, one of ten. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I'm sure there are many who do, but I mean, like at the same time, uh, GST. I'm a fan. I mean, like, I don't know if I mentioned it here, but I've mentioned it on a, a bunch of places. I think GST is a great thing in many ways. Yeah. Uh, there are issues, but I mean, like nonetheless, just the yeah. basic idea I, behind it is fantastic. Yeah, I think the issues, the execution has to be better. There They'll get issues. ironed out. There are issues. I mean, everything has issues. When you try yeah. and uh, roll out a platform to a billion people, there are going to be issues. Some of them are predictable issues, but nonetheless, there are always going to be issues. I think just generally, it's a more positive thing. I think it really helps with this kind of stuff, right? Especially in the small scale space, right? Mm-hmm. I think it becomes an extremely uh, valuable tool for them because they were never taking input credit on anything that they never. were creating, right? Now all of a sudden, that becomes a big thing. Now, once you get input credit, that changes the entire mathematics of doing business in cash versus not doing it in cash. And I think that's uh, uh, this. And and once that part comes, right? You also feel that you know what? Okay, now. maybe i don't need to be hiding my income yeah. maybe yeah. things should be accounted for yeah. and it makes sense to do that because you're incentivized to it yes. right when you are saving 35% on everything at that point in time you're like ah, i'm saving 35% now you're saving 12% on everything now 12% is that really worth the effort of like having the possibility of the tax man coming and knocking <laughs> on my door you know i mean like that the ma- the, the incentives change the math changes in your head totally that's true but so obviously platforms like this i would say, you would say are beneficial to uh the cause which yeah. you're going after right i think that's like a a broader movement as such right so every individual of business does realize that okay you know you can shy away from it today mm-hmm. but in the course of time you'll have to be there mm-hmm. and i think which is where be it payments or you know with, with e-commerce right with flipkart and make my trip you know doing doing the good work that they are every business does realize that you know this is where i want to be i don't want to be shying away from it yeah. even if it at a cost that you know 
I'll get accounted for. It's okay because that's where the future is. Right, and that's where the bigger growth and the story is. So, but at the same on the same lines, uh, another new thing development which we've seen lately is obviously, like I said, fintech as a space is always evolving. And while you guys are gonna go and do lending and all these other you know innovations in this uh, around the central core theme of payments. uh even the bigger folks like a whatsapp is mm-hmm. now in the payment space right and i think that for you guys have has been something uh do you see that as an opportunity do you see that as a threat because i know initially you guys were the links being shared on whatsapp and now it's whatsapp payments directly so how how do you think see that ecosystem evolving since you're very close to that space i love it i think it's incredible that someone like whatsapp is putting its might behind it that yeah. someone like google is putting its might behind this i think it's incredible what helps is uh, so the way i see it right we are still a small company we are like a boat and when these bigger companies you know come in the game that rises the tide mm. and when the tide rises all of us benefit from it right what it does is it helps create the awareness among the audience what every business individual is seeing you know what i can be online i can be doing these things i can pay online which which a much simpler mm-hmm. way and that's where we come in now when a business realizes that you know they want to be giving an online option to their customer or they want to be given an online presence so their customers can find them mm-hmm. where do they go which is where we come in right so over the years right uh, and especially when you talk to any investor in the last you know 3 to 5 years mm-hmm. the first question is always you're competing with ptm yes yeah. <laughs> and i don't think we've ever been able to you know give them a satisfactory answer right if we are or we are not but like no we are not in fact It's incredible. Whatever they're doing, it helps us in a similar, the same analogy which I gave yeah. for WhatsApp and Google. Right. It's the same. It creates the friendliness towards online payments just generally. It just brings more people yeah. out there. It increases the awareness because someone like us, at the scale where we are, right, we're not out there spending billions of dollars on, uh, say, mass media to be able to educate these guys. Right, someone else is doing the job, right. and we are reaping the benefits of it. That's true. In fact, uh, like again, Google, Facebook, which is WhatsApp or Google or now Paytm, like. speaking in the same breath uh, as well right uh, they are focusing on india as this big centerpiece for this to happen and that's simply because there is that much opportunity here so what for you are you still uh, like you're obviously helping more of individual sellers and unstructured businesses smes micro smes and so on do you see from a value chain point of view is the market deeper and is it still that big and valuable like what's your outlook i know as a noble cause it all looks great i mean of course even the paytm is going after this whole unbanked mm-hmm. uh population and so on right mm-hmm. but a lot of us draw parallels to china we draw parallels to us markets and i the sense i get is that those markets ha- are at a different age than india is so how long do you think this story is going to take for you know this MSME mm-hmm. to you know actually show value for uh, the kind of efforts you guys are putting. I think it'll take a long time. Yeah. While things might get accelerated over a period of time, mm-hmm. it still is going to be a marathon journey. Of course, comparing with China is just way too unfair. China is like way ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, the amount of the way things have changed in the last two decades, so there is just incredible. Mm-hmm. But I could see a similar shift happening here. But that's that's at a broader level, right? Be it in the entire consumer or e-commerce space, we'll see that, or in the payment space, we'll see that. At an MSME space, the game is much more, much more difficult. Right. Yeah. Because the, the diversity of businesses, the way they spread out, the way to reach out to them, all of that is just way too, way too challenging. And if you look at India, right, in the last say, two decades, there have been two businesses which I see have done a great job in the SME space. I won't even go to the micro space, mm. which is another ball game. Mm. The companies like Justile and India Mart, mm. who've been able to, you know. Carve out a niche for themselves. They've gone public. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've done a tremendous job, right? It took them a good ten, fifteen years yeah, to be able yeah. to reach the stage where where they where yeah. they got, right? So that's something which internally, you know, we keep talking to each other as a team. You know, we tell everyone, right? Especially the younger folks in the company. This is not a space where you know what you'll start and in five years you'll be a unicorn or something. Right? <laughs> we might be. We might do it. We don't if really you, care if for you it. add blockchain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this is something which is going to take time, yeah. right? So and that's that's the that's actually the reality, right? right? I mean, people you have and you guys obviously know it, uh, but a lot of the other stories, which I mean, obviously the media and everyone focuses on, is about this almost overnight success yeah. and all that. That's not what it is. <laughs> I think I think they're just so unfair because uh, whenever we 
you know in the younger crop of be it you know people who join startups or the founders there is just this incredible aspiration or a dream that you know what will become something big like very soon right yeah. they just don't have the patience or stamina to to get there so i think that the media does a great uh, injustice in that sense yeah. right uh, no so that's where i think the story is that if you stick at it and obviously build out a business which is sustainable throughout that long marathon like you said mm-hmm. uh then you will uh, you there is there's some really interesting stuff down the road yep. so awesome man yeah. thanks so much for doing this i think uh, we got some really interesting stuff out of you yeah great insights for, about i hope so <laughs> about what this market's all about and uh, look forward to hearing more uh, from instamojo yes. and uh, all the cool stuff you guys are building definitely yeah and shout out to all our listeners here if you want to sell something online go and put it on instamojo that makes sense also please remember to go and sign up for the slack channel you can go to the website ivmpodcast.com/1 over there there'll be a button saying i would like to subscribe to slack press that button send us your email address and we'll send you an invite also please do the ratings on iTunes or wherever you listen to the podcast see if there's a place to rate it and just give us a rating that kind of really helps in making sure people know more about this awesome thank you thank you thank you guys as you can see we have a podcast listener in his natural habitat Millions of years of evolution have led him to this point. He's on his way to work and listening to podcasts makes his miserable day better. He will now head to work and use all his knowledge to communicate with other colleagues and possibly future mates. You can find more of his species on ivmpodcasts.com. Your one-stop destination where you can check out all the coolest Indian podcasts. Happy listening.